automatic minds may bring up all kinds of echoes from the past. It is interesting that such things happen every now and again. In 1912, a science called eugenics was established in London. People tend to use highfalutin names for anything which is particularly stupid. The ideas you find in eugenics really came from people's brains and not from their souls. What are the aims of this science? To ensure that only healthy individuals are born in future and not inferior ones. Economics and anthropology are to join forces to discover the laws according to which men and women are to be brought together in such a way that a strong race is produced. People are really beginning to think in this way. The ideal of the London Congress, which was chaired by Darwin's son, was to examine people of different classes to see how large the skulls of the rich were compared to those of the poor, who have less opportunity for learning, how far sensibility went in rich and poor, how far the rich could resist getting tired, and how far the poor would do so, and so on. They want to gain information on the human body in this way, which may at some future date enable them to establish exactly the following. This is how the man should look, this is how the woman should look, if they are to produce the true human being of the future. He should have such a capacity for getting tired, and she such a capacity. This size skull for him, and a matching size for her, and so on. Those are the rumblings, natural rumblings, in brains which are emptied of soul. Ideas rumbling about which had reality in the Atlantean age. Then there really were laws which enabled people to determine size, growth, and all kinds of things by cross-breeding and the like. It was a science that was widespread in Atlantean times, and as I mentioned yesterday, sorely misused. Atlantean science worked on the basis of physical relationships, and it was known that if such a man was brought together with such a woman, differences between men and women were much greater at the time, the result would be such and such a creature, and then a different variety could be produced, just as plant breeders do today. The mysteries brought order into this cross-breeding, where related and different elements were brought together. They established groups and withdrew anything which had to be withdrawn from humanity. The blackest of black magic was practiced in Atlantean times, and order was created by establishing classes and taking these matters out of human control. This was one of the factors which led to the nations and races of today. The issue of the nation as an entity is coming up again in our present time. It is an echo of the soulless brain from Atlantean times. There is so much talk about national issues today, but it is only the body speaking. The spirit has withdrawn and already belongs to a totally different world today. There you have the discrepancy between the reality and the speechifying about the principle of nationality, in quotes, which goes on today. This will never lead to anything good. If politics are based on issues relating to nations, which are no longer issues of the day because the soul belongs to entirely different orders and realms than those which come to expression in our physical nature, this will inevitably take us into chaos over and over again. All this must be known, and it can only be known through anthroposophy. Those rumblings in the brain emptied of soul are the reason why ideas that human beings should be produced on the basis of certain laws are now coming up again. Something else also reveals the rumblings of outdated ideas, ideas which can still be active in dried-up brains, but which no longer come from the soul. The soul needs to be made strong so that anthroposophy can enter into it. Then people will speak out of their individual reality again. You have no doubt heard of all the nonsense we get now, with all kinds of different people shown to be what they are in the light of psychopathology. All it needs is for someone to write a decent poem. The doctor will immediately tell you what illness he has. So we get all kinds of treatises on 
Victor Scheffel from the psychiatrist's point of view, on Nietzsche from the psychiatrist's point of view, and on Conrad Ferdinand Meyer from the psychiatrist's point of view. Reading between the lines, we feel the authors of these books are saying, pity he did not get treatment in time. If he had had treatment at the right time, someone like Conrad Ferdinand Meyer, for example, would not have written the kinds of things he has written, for they are entirely written out of a diseased state. It is very much in the spirit of our time that no attention is paid to the growing inwardness of individual human beings. Sometimes this must inevitably have the effect, especially in someone like Conrad Ferdinand Meyer, of the outward physical body showing signs of disease, so that the inner life can achieve the highest spiritual level in a work of art, quite independent of the physical body. I am not bringing these things up in order to criticize them. From the purely medical point of view, they are, of course, correct. There is nothing to be said against them. It is equally possible to do something else from a purely medical point of view. You can take the Gospels and show from a number of things that Jesus Christ, that strange individual, existed because some quite specific pathological elements had come together. Such a book has in fact been written and anyone can read it. Another book shows that everything which came from the individual called Jesus could only have come from this individual because he was suffering from a particular disease. We must penetrate all these things with our understanding if we are to enter into present developments. I especially want to discuss the education issue in this context to show you that today growing children cannot be considered in a way which focuses only on things which come to outward expression. If we were to do so, our efforts at education would sometimes simply fail to reach the element which is now becoming more and more inward. Such things are not properly taken into account today. And this is why there is so little understanding and so much philistinism in some respects, Philistinism is the opposite of a true understanding of human nature, for Philistines always like to stick to the norm. Anything which does not fit in with this is considered abnormal. But this will not help us to understand the world around us, and above all, other human beings. One of the things we should encourage in our anthroposophical society is to learn to understand human beings so that we may give due regard to the individual nature of others. Individuals differ much more from each other than one thinks, for the human soul no longer relates entirely to the body, and this makes human beings very complex today. This, of course, has other consequences, though the matter is dealt with rather clumsily today. We must hope that anthroposophy will help people become less clumsy about it. Just consider, in ancient Greece the whole body was filled with the whole soul and they were in agreement. Today this is not the case, for the bodies are partly empty. I am not saying anything derogatory about empty heads. They will stay empty as part of evolution. In reality, however, nothing stays empty in this world. The heads are merely empty of something which was destined to fill them at another time. Nothing is ever completely empty. With the human soul withdrawing more and more from the body, the body is increasingly in danger of being filled with something else. And if human beings are not prepared to take up impulses which can only come from spiritual knowledge, the body will be filled with demonic powers. Humanity is facing a destiny where the body may be filled with aramonic demonic powers. So we have to add to what I said yesterday about future development. There will be people in future who are you know, Tom, Dick and Harry in ordinary life, which is something determined by social circumstances. But their bodies will be empty to such an extent that a powerful Aramonic spirit can live in them. One will be meeting Aramonic demons. Human beings will not be what they appear to be. The individual person will be deep down inside and outwardly one will get a totally different picture. 
This shows the complexity of life to come. It is reasonable to say that there will be situations in future when it will be difficult to know who one is dealing with. Ricardo Huch's longing for the devil really arises from what will be coming in the future. The institutions and ideas, especially the social ideas people have today, are abstract and crude. They are clumsy in the face of the complexities that are lying ahead. And because people are not able to have ideas or concepts about the true nature of things, they are sliding more and more deeply into chaos. The events of the war make this quite clear. Chaos is arising because reality has changed. Reality is becoming fuller and richer than anything people are able to think of or create in their heads. And we shall have to be clear in our minds that we are faced with a choice. To go on beating each other to a pulp, shooting at one another in the way we do now, because we do not know how to bring order into the world, or start to develop concepts and ideas to match the complexity of the situation. A spiritual movement must exist where people seek to develop concepts which meet the real situation. There will be vast numbers of people in future who want to stick to the rumblings of the past. Today they are still in the minority. Their concepts, ideas and actions will be based on the outside world around them and on the fact that their bodies are being filled with the Aramonic spirit which wants them to form such ideas. We should not fool ourselves, for we, are, for we are faced with a quite specific movement. At the Council of Constantinople it was decreed that the spirit did not exist. It was dogmatically stated that the human being consisted only of body and soul, and it was heresy to speak of a human spirit. In the same way, attempts will be made to decree the soul, the inner life, as non-existent. The time will come, and it may not be far off, when quite different tendencies will come up at a congress like the one held in 1912, and people will say, it is pathological for people to even think in terms of spirit and soul. Sound, in quotes, people will speak of nothing but the body. It will be considered a sign of illness for anyone to arrive at the idea of any such thing as a spirit or a soul. People who think like that will be considered to be sick, and you can be quite sure of it, a medicine will be found for this. At Constantinople the spirit was made non-existent. The soul will be made non-existent with the aid of a drug. Taking a, quote, sound point of view, close quote, people will invent a vaccine to influence the organism as early as possible, preferably as soon as it is born, so that this human body never even gets the idea that there is a soul and a spirit. The two philosophies of life will be in complete opposition. One movement will need to reflect how concepts and ideas may be developed to meet the reality of soul and spirit. The others, the heirs of modern materialism, will look for the vaccine to make the body, in quotes, healthy, that is, makes its constitution such that this body no longer talks of such rubbish as soul and spirit, but takes a sound view of the forces which live in engines and in chemistry and that planets and suns arise from nebula in the cosmos. Materialistic physicians will be asked to drive the souls out of humanity. People who think that playful ideas will help them to look ahead to the future are very much mistaken. We need serious, profound ideas to look ahead to the future. Anthroposophy is not a game, not just a theory. It is a task that must be faced for the sake of human evolution. The end of Lecture 5 You are listening to RudolfSteinerAudio.com This is a reading of a cycle of lectures by Rudolf Steiner entitled The Fall of the Spirits of Darkness. This is Lecture 6, entitled The New Spirituality, given in Dornach on the 8th of October, 1917.